Okay, the next step uh, what you're doing it's already preparation for publication and preparation of the C file. Well, first thing what we'd want to do is to generate our C file. To do so, we need to go to the ins file, open it for editing with a 4. Let's go to the top of our file, add, um, type here command Acta. Acta will generate us a C file. So escape, save, and do an Excel. So deals. Okay. When we did that, let's do Control O to see what happens. And you can see we have an error right now. Cell contents from unit and instruction and atom and atom list do not agree. What does it mean? Well. How I told you in the beginning, we gave for uh, approximate formula of the material because we never don't know what happens uh, during the chemical reaction and what is the contents on the crystal. And right now, the program telling us when we synthesize an acta, it does its little check and um, uh, compare the formula what we gave it in the beginning to the what we have now. And obviously, those two formulas uh, do not agree with each other. Well, to correct it, it's very easy. So, what you need to do? Let's go back with Control O. Um, go to LST file, open it with F4, with editing, and go down with page down until you see the same error right here. So. Uh, cell content from unit instruction and atom list do not agree. And you see here is a table, yes? Uh, this shift and error down, copy this table, so select this table and press Ctrl C to copy it. Uh, say escape and go to your ins file. Okay, uh, you see the temp and unit. Uh, comments uh, right here. So go to the temp and create a free line with enter. You press enter and it creates a free line. Go to the free line with a cursor and press Ctrl V or paste. So right now you can see this table uh, and you can see the unit. So obviously that the in this table which we just copied, the first column would correspond to values what you have in unit right now. So, and the second column, what it's supposed to be. Okay? So, what you need to do is just change the unit values to the second column values. So, we need to change 80 for carbon and hydrogen to 64. For oxygen, we will lucky one. We guessed absolutely correct amount of oxygens, 64 and 64. So now we need we no need in this table. So you can go with cursor back to this table and say shift delete. Just delete will not work. I don't know why, but that's how you correct your formula. Press escape again, save it, and do Excel deals. Do Excel again, and you can see that uh, there is no more such error. So we correct, we got our correct formula. Well, again, when we did the Acta, it generates us a C file, and here is it. So let's open to view, so with a free. And uh, this is a C file, and C file is it's a very long file which uh, tells you everything about your experiment, how you've done, its parameters of the crystals, uh, parameters of the atoms, bond lengths, and so on. So everything what you need for your publication is here, and everything about about your experiment is also here. So what our next steps? would be it's preparing this file for publication. It's all our next steps in structure development. But first what you need to look at it's go on the bottom of this file. So you can easily go to this page down to this small little table. Well it's telling you if your file is complete or not. Well right now 
we collect our data to 28.57 degree on theta, not 2 theta. So on 2 theta would be, let's see, run calc, yes. 28.5 multiply on 2, so it's still 57 degrees we collected. Um, and we have 98% of completeness. Well, let's maybe cut it a little bit. Uh, it's normal way uh, uh, then when we collecting the data, we losing the majority of high angle reflections because we don't see them. So what you usually do, you cut several degrees um, uh, of the data, several high degrees, no? for example, till 54 degrees. Maximum what you can cut till 52 degrees. So you always need to collect on molar radiation till 52 degrees. If you cut it, your data below uh, 52 degrees, you would really need to explain it uh, to the reviewer because uh, reviewers usually don't like it. So, okay, we decided to cut it till 54. So it's with legal limits. Uh, let's go exit, escape. To do so, we go to ins file and let's put it right after acta. Again, create a, a free line with enter and put here the command uh, omit space minus two fifty four. Command tell uh, telling that take reflections only from two till 54 degrees by 2 theta. Very useful comment. Allows you to cut your data and get really nice results. Okay, so escape, save and do an Excel again. Okay, and let's look now in a C file. Go to press F4 uh, and go down. And right now you can see our data become 99%. That's what uh, a Euchre or International Union of Crystallography really wants from you. Um, okay, so we correct that thing. The next thing, if you press Ctrl O du during your refinement, uh, you really need to look on one of the parameters called goof or goodness of fit. This goodness of fit should be uh, very close to 1, uh, but not below 1, ok? So 1.026 uh, would be perfect value for GOF, uh, but 0 0.987 would not be nice uh, value for GOF. So, uh, how to correct GOF? Um, and make goof uh, close to 1. To do, uh, to do so, let's do Ctrl O again and go to INS file, open it with a form. So, so we doing it with weight uh, scheme. Uh, weight scheme uh, have two values, usually uh, as default at 0 0.1, uh, but it usually have two values. And second value you just can type yourself. It's for example, let's take it 0 0.5. Here is, is there set values for the weight scheme? No, it's never set values for the weight scheme. So you always need to play with those two numbers to make your goof uh, approximately uh, equal to 1. Uh, here is some scheme which I usually use, some other people use, and uh, uh, the, my advisors in Russia teach me to do so, and I'm following this procedure all my years in crystallography, and it works quite good. So, what do you do for that? You make your first number to be equal around 0, 005. You always decrease in your first number. And second, make it 0 0.5. Save it, do Excel, and see what happens with the goof. Uh, you can see your goof if is decreasing. It also helps to decrease your uh, WR2 value. So before, if you see, it was 14%. Right now, we decrease it almost by 4%. It's also uh, decrease somewhat decreases R1, and it decreases your highest peak. So it's very good. 
Okay, so uh, we've done that, but it's still our goof little bit high. So to correct that, uh, you go back to ins files, and now you're playing only the second coefficient. Well, let's let's try to increase it. Let's make it 1.5. Do Excel again and see what happens with our goof. Uh, right now, our goof you can see it's decreased by a lot. Uh, way way below one so we can do so so let's go back here and let's maybe uh, increasing it in one it was too much but we going in the right direction so let's make it it's now 0 0.6 and let's do Excel okay. oh, right now goof more or less okay. It's 0 0.031. So that's what you should actually look for. Um, so what you do next when your goof is corrected? Well, the uh, value of goof, which is very close to 1, allows you to look on reflections, which are bad. And how you can look at, uh, at it? You go to LST file. Go to F4 go down. You remember the table with thermal parameters. You can see is uh, very nice, but if you go a little bit down, it's uh, giving you table of most dis uh, disagreeable reflections. Um, and uh, those reflections are really bad in your uh, structure refinement. So sometimes it's really nice idea to omit um, uh, those reflections. Or you tell me, well, you uh, doing something funny with your data, you are omitting the reflection. I tell you, yeah, well, we collect around 10,000 reflections. So if I delete 100 out of them, it will be absolutely nothing. It will be less than 1%. So uh, in this case, I have all right to delete several Ref uh, reflections which are not matching and improve my R factors and sometimes deleting like one or two of bad reflection might improve your structure refinement dramatically R factor goes down quite big okay so how we can improve those well what you need to look it's you remember how we separated good peaks from bad peaks with Q peaks intensities well here we have similar number which called delta F squared divided by ASD and also look the same thing look on the big jumps in the um, your data well, in this case I have see this free uh, I know it's very small jumps it's very good structure actually very good data but those free reflections they can be definitely deleted they have little bit high values that the rest of the data so um, what I want to do I want to copy those free reflections again you press in shift and arrow down and you select those uh, free reflections and what you do next you do control C escape you go out go back to ins file uh, open it with a 4 and uh, what you do next is uh, you go into uh, you see the omit line yes make a free line near the omit and do control V so you paste those reflection here uh, the next thing what you need to do, you go on the selected area, press Alt and arrow down, and you deselect it. Alt and arrow down. Then go with your cursor to the values for those reflections, keep H, K, and L. And uh, you go, you press Alt and arrow down, go to the end, and after that, press arrow, arrow key right to the right and you can see you can select it those reflect those values what you do with them you just simply delete them so shift delete and uh, what you left with it's only H K L values for bad reflections and what you need to type it just omit 
command. The same omit which we used before, but if you if it have three numbers, it's understand it will omit.